just uh, slow it down a notch. So the last time I was in the 720S on the road was outside of Rome in Italy during the launch event. If you recall watching that, I think you'll agree that its number one trait is just its blistering performance. Particularly, my favorite, my favorite thing about this car is its straight line punch and particularly how it hooks up after the apex. Once you're past the apex and you can give it all of its power, the, it, its ability to lay traction and catapult you into a different time zone is outstanding. However, if you did watch that video, you might also remember that I sort of concluded by saying that for all of its incredible performance, it doesn't necessarily deliver that experience with as much theater as you might expect from a supercar. Now that's not to do this thing a disservice. It is of course a sense of occasion being in it. However, when you're on the road, most of the time you're not able to unleash the performance that this thing has. And when I say performance, to give it some context, it sort of overlaps into early hypercar territory. It is that fast. Anyway, enough of it being fast. We are now at the middle of winter in the UK. This car is running winter tires. The tread blocks are like this, great for displacing water, not necessarily the best for finding optimal grip. And I'm in quite a unique position in that I've been living with this car now for the last 10 days. So I have rinsed it. I have done everything I possibly can with this thing. It's been a car that I've had over Christmas. Uh, I did all my Christmas shopping in it. I visited relatives in it. I took parcels to and from friends' houses. Everything that you would do over Christmas, this thing has nailed. And living with it has put this car into its own bracket. Yes, it's a supercar, but its breadth of ability Honestly, I'm not sure of any other car that ticks quite as many boxes as this in the supercar realm. Let's think of the things that this thing will go up against. 911 Turbo, maybe an Audi R8, but when you look at this as a complete package, the usability of it is daft. I mean, they've managed to drop the engine so low in the rear that you now have a like a proper boot in the back. And maybe through this camera it doesn't look so big, but the amount of presence that I was carrying around, it became the fastest sleigh in the world. And the boot in the front, it's huge. Now, this is this sort of funny trade-off where I can't, I can't quite place where this thing should sit. Like, as a daily driver, it's definitely, almost without question, it is the best supercar that I have ever driven to use daily. If you've been following my pictures on Instagram, you'll know how dirty this thing has become because I've been taking it everywhere. It's in the winter and I'm not precious about it. If I was in the Speciali this winter, I'd just maybe have kept it in the garage most of the time, perhaps cleaned it three times a week, uh, just because the conditions don't lend itself to, I think, the psychological nature that the Speciali imparts on you. This thing, I just want to get out and drive it everywhere and it laps up every situation, everything. It doesn't matter what's what. I mean, I've, I've had family in the passenger seats. My family aren't the most flexible and the new doors and the entry and the way they've cut out this roof slot here and scalloped away the carbon tub just allows for it to just be a lot more friendly and usable when you're using it on a daily basis. But going back, going back to where I'm not sure this car fits is ultimately, when you've spec this car up with the bits that you probably want, it's coming in at 250,000 pounds. I mean, you can spec it a lot higher, you can spec it lower, but I think the average price is, is around about there. And it is ultimately a supercar. And I'm sort of like, should it be this easy? And when I say easy, when we're driving like this, it kind of is no sense of occasion at all. It's, it's nice to be in and witness all of the cool interior. But I'm not really aware that I'm in a supercar. It's when you do this a few times, drop it down, and we're in, like, we're in second now. I mean, second track mode. That was in track mode as well, so it's fairly, fairly tame. But when you do this, just a short squirt, everything changes. And I guess it is a real Jekyll and Hyde car. Now, I can't tell if I like that or not. I can't tell if when I'm in it, I want it to be a pure sense of occasion for every turn of the wheel. But equally, as I was saying with the Speciali earlier, I'm actually using this every single day. So you're getting more of your money's worth 
As a result, there is no question about it, of all of the supercars that I'm likely to own, this is the one that I would use the most. It just beckons you, no matter the weather, no matter what you're doing, beckons you on. I've done long motorway miles in this car. We're in this world now, aren't we? We're in this world where cars are blurring, where supercars are blurring lines between this sort of occasional, raw, visceral attack machine to something that you can do your Christmas shopping in. And I'm not sure if I like that or not. And that's where, you know, things like the more pure, raw versions of these cars, for me, really stand out. Now, if you follow this channel regularly, you'll know that I had a McLaren 720S on order, a very early one, and my comment sections are very often filled with, where the hell is your 720S? Uh, and I agree with you, long story short, there was delays, delays, delays on my build slot from the factory. Never really quite found out why that was, and I ended up pulling my order because I found out that if I wanted the car, it would eventually be next year. So yeah, ended up pulling the order. Now. Do I regret that? Probably. <laughs> it's usable. Uh, I was actually having a chat with someone and we almost likened it to the RS6 of the supercar world. It is literally, it ticks that many boxes. It's crazy. But on top of that, I, I just don't know how they've got about making the access to performance fade into a world of practicality so seamlessly. It's ridiculous. Other than not having two seats in the back, it does everything. Everything. Uh, I mean, I, it's hard to fault it. The only fault that I have with it, and I'm going to provide a counter to this fault, is that there's just for me, there isn't enough theatre. Yes, when you smash that throttle, there's theatre aplenty. But when you're driving it on the road, you're not always doing that. And so I would sooner it give me emotional connection and feedback and just sort of ultimately i think this kind of comes down to the way it sounds but when i'm driving at road speeds i kind of want to know that i'm driving a crazy supercar and i think that's why for me i am now looking forward to the inevitable lightweight or lt version of this car now, i say lightweight this thing's i think it's like sort of high 1300 kgs weight like wet weight because of course we've got this new mono cage 2 carbon cell structure which is basically majority of the, this car's chassis but as an lt owner i spend 10,000 miles in the 675 lt and that thing for me is still their best car they absolutely nailed it and it was a sense of occasion even when i was going slow this thing we have to remember and this is where my counter is to my own point this is a 650s successor yet everyone compares it to the 675 LT because its performance is a complete step on. Literally, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have believed that their sort of entry level super series car would be this ballistically fast. I mean, I, when I first drove this, I was literally like, where the hell do we go from here? It's, it's daft. So having said all of that, yes, it ticks the most boxes. It is without doubt the fastest car in its class and all I can say is, I do miss the fact that there would probably be one of these cars in my ownership by now, but what I'm more excited about is the lightweight version of this car. And so, to summarize, as the rain closes in once again, I am now going to do my grocery shopping in this car, and I will definitely be the fastest carrot carrier in the land. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in Dubai. Ciao!